So this month's live stream was all about three-year-olds and it was filled with a load of information. As soon as I heard it was about three-year-olds, I was really buzzing because I knew it was going to be a really good stream. I knew a lot of the information that we were going to get anyways because I had covered it previously and I'd really took a deep dive into it, every Discord quote or a mention or Reddit and whatnot. But what we got to see in game was awesome and some of the new information we had to see the direction it was going in was even better than previously. But Without rambling on anymore, I'll just jump right into the video and get amongst all the information we got this month. So it was kind of in two parts, and part one being more of a PowerPoint presentation style talk about the mechanics of three olds. Now the reason they've done this is because it's quite complex, so I think they wanted to give you a bit of a backstory and some information to understand what you were about to see. Part two being in-game and taking a look at some of the actual systems, and that was what I was really wanting to see. Stephen had three devs with him this month, which were Bucky, Mike and Corey. So the first question Stephen wanted to be answered is, what exactly is three olds in Ashes of Creation? for anyone who didn't really know about them. And three olds are obviously a type of in-game, non-instant housing for players with three purposes. Purpose one is to allow players to express themselves with choices of housing, buildings and furniture. Purpose two is to allow players to access the highest level of processing and this is only going to be available to do within the three old system. Purpose three is for players to build businesses where they can offer services. There's going to be a lot of freedom in where you can place and what you can place in your free old. Now, owning a free old is going to be a multi step process, and to start it off, you're going to need to complete a quest to unlock the ability to bid on any available free old permits that become available within a node. And the quest to unlock free olds will become available once you've hit level 50. These plots of land will be predetermined for each node's ZOI, which is Zone of Influence. The plots of land you will be able to bid for via an auction system will be in the whole of the region of the issuing node. This includes in it its vassal node's zone of influence, meaning if you get your permit from a metropolis, you're going to have a much larger area to choose from. However, do bear in mind, it's going to take quite a bit of time to build a node up to its metropolis state to be able to do that, because obviously this is going to take weeks and weeks and you're going to have to hope everyone's working together and people ain't trying to fuck you over or raid or siege you. Once you have your permit for your plot of land, you can go place your Old. Your permit's going to be an item in your bag that you'll be able to take to the parcel to claim the land. Once it's claimed, you're going to be able to go into a top down view and lay out exactly where you want your free old to go on that parcel of land. We haven't seen any of that in game yet, but I imagine we will down the line, or at least a mini clip. I'm sure we will get to see that at some point. There's going to be a decent amount of space between free olds, as Stephen said, we don't want it to be where you're running through the world and at every glance you see someone's free old. Now that's a quote and obviously they are meant to be spaced out like I like I had said on the other video and there's actually gonna be a minimum distance between the free olds and places where you won't be able to place free olds like a point of interest and dungeons which is obviously common sense you, you can't build in a dungeon and expect to do that it's just simple so there is gonna be restrictions and it has to be done for the game's sake because it's not fully sandbox game it's not a survival game where you can build anywhere but they aren't massively limiting you and they're giving you a huge amount of free me much more than any other MMO has done before to this complexity and I think they're going to find it hard to do in the future because these guys have put a lot of thought and effort into this and it's really fucking nice to see I'm really happy with it. To get back to the video the first structure you must build on your free old is a house. Now these are going to come in three sizes small medium and large. The size of the house decides how much furniture can be placed in the free old. Some furnitures will have functional benefits and they're going to be some restrictions where it can be placed but this is just whether or not it's indoor or outdoor furniture. When you first get the plot of land, there's going to be a little shed on the plot which is to store all of your materials. Once you have a house blueprint, you can go and place it on your free old and it will create a construction site where you're expected to bring materials. This can be done through either the caravan or mule system or even just individually if you want to take loads of trips back and forth. Once you have all the resources for that 
house in the shed, you're going to be able to construct it. You will be able to decide where the furniture is placed in that house, and the functional furniture may be able to give you buffs or bolster up consumables. The building blueprint will dictate the base appearance of the building, however you will be able to put cosmetics on them if you have the correct cosmetics for that building. Building cosmetics are split into three main categories, which are housing, artisanship and business. Basic blueprints will be sold at a vendor in the node. The racial influence of the node will influence the blueprint, so if it's a VEC node, you will find VEC blueprints. Blueprints will also drop from bosses, scribes will be able to create and customise them, and I imagine we'll find more information on that down the line. You can also visit different nodes to buy them if you're looking for different styles. You can also sell them to other players. Cosmetics will not only be available through the pre-order system, but will also be achievable in-game. Getting onto the free old businesses, business buildings will be providing services to other players like markets where you'll be able to sell things you've made, or taverns where you can sell a food buff. Free olds are meant to heavily interact with the family system, especially when it comes to the free old business, as the owner of the free old will be able to allow members of their family to interact with the business and modify stuff such as prices and the types of sellables or services that are capable of being sold. Another reason they have the family system set to heavily interact with the free old system is due to the fact not everyone may be able to get a free old, so it allows more players to interact with the system. Buildings will have up grave paths where you'll be able to make them better or worse or specific via a certain lane of specialization. Once you've placed the building, you'll need to become more proficient in something that relates to that building. Within an artisanship building, this will be the artisanship it belongs to and with the business buildings, this will be via actually working in them. You'll be able to unlock upgrades you can build to make the building better at some things more than others. You will not be able to spec into the other trees of the upgrade system you would have to repurpose the tavern to spec into the other trees or build another tavern. This is one of the systems that will be available to test in Alpha 2 and once it has been tested they will take the feedback and iterate it on the system. So realistically we're going to need to test the fuck out of these and make sure we find any bugs or breaks or any flaws or anything that can be improved upon and give them that feedback in good structured information, not rants and raves, really give them the details they need and just give them the facts because emotion's good and we're all passionate but if you fill it with loads of other bullshit they're just not going to listen so you really need to structure that. Each crafting and processing profession will have an associated artisanship building that players will need to construct and upgrade to give them access to place profession stations. These buildings will also have an upgrade tree which you will need to work your way down to place more profession stations. The artisan buildings will be able to give benefits to the related profession stations on the free old. An example of this was that a weaponsmithing building will give a buff to weaponsmithing stations and if you want a master a process and profession you will need to have a free old as this is the only place you can do master and grandmaster processing. And when it comes to master and crafting this will not be able to be done at a free old, this will be done in the nodes. You will only be able to craft journeyman level crafts in the free old so you are limited a little bit but I think these things are still fucking amazing. Now when it comes to processing, each processing profession will have four stations and these stations will be unlocked as you progress through the profession. Each one of these stations will make goods that are useful to the economy, to crafters and to other processors. Each station will build on itself and into other stations so once you have reached Grand Master stage, you'll be able to circle between the stations and make different stuff depending on what you want to make. So as a note there, just because you have an artisanship building it doesn't necessarily mean you get to have all the stations it may require you to have multiple artisanship buildings and if you want to access every station you will also require a lot of artisanship buildings. The processing stations will not just need raw resources to process, they will also need fuel and a certain amount of it to fulfil the recipe's costs. Any item may have a fuel value and players will be able to mix and match fuels together to fulfil the fuel value 
of the recipe. Players will learn as the game goes on what are good fuels, what can work as a fuel, what will be the meta fuel for the station. Through the upgrade tree and the quality of the station, you may be able to reduce the resource fuel and gold costs of the process. There will be other upgrades such as more yield and higher rarity chance. It will all depend on how you upgrade your process and building. When you upgrade the building, there will be a visual change to represent the path you've chosen. We got to look at some of the UI for the Arts and Chip windows, however they were a work in progress and we're getting a complete revamp. We also got a gathering update, every gathering profession will have free tools which you unlock as you progress the profession. Different resource types in a profession may require one of the different tools. Tools and arts and chip gear will have a stat that can affect how fast you gather and how you want to gather. The free old we saw in the video was more centred around farming but you can fully focus them around processing if that's what you want to do. And with farming buildings and higher processing level, you're going to be able to affect how fast your crops are actually grow, they're going to have better crop rotations and other general farming things that I won't go into because it would take forever. Since farming has livestock, we'll feed directly into hunting and synergies with animal husbandry. Animal husbandry has multiple lanes of progression and specialisations from mounts and pets to even livestock. You can breed animals for traits such as speed, health, combat stats, but also fertility, harvesting yield and also butchering yield. Your material infantry is going to be different too. There's going to be more Tetris style inventory with the resources being different sizes and having different stacks. You can increase this inventory size with bags. The UI for this was also a work in progress and was more there to test the functionality. You'll be able to choose what resources you harvest from livestock. An example of this was the cow where the byproduct of the cow is milk but you can also harvest it for beef if you want. Fields have changed from being half an acre in size to being one and a half acres which means they're now three times bigger and I honestly think that is a really nice change. So freeholds are going to be so complex and the fact that they've increased the acre size from you know to three times of what it was is awesome again like it was already good enough but to do that is even better and to constantly be getting this feedback and how it's going to affect the guilds and how you're going to have certain freeholds with certain families organized together doing certain things whether it's the crafting or blacksmithing or you know animal husbandry for tame and or breeding or saddle making and all this other shit and you're really going to have this community vibe people will need to work together they'll need to be organized and you're going to need shit getting done efficiently it's not really like other MMOs where you're just going to have one free old to yourself or a little building that doesn't involve others you really are going to need to work as a team and if people aren't pulling the weight or they're being a bit selfish or you know they're not bringing value to the guild because they're too you know self-centered or focus on the themselves I think that's going to take a big hit and on it many MMOs you can get players like this that you can get along with and you can kind of learn to live with but in a game like this when it negatively it could affect a siege that you're organizing for a dungeon the reputation of your guild a trip out or a caravan or the lines that you're breeding i mean it's gonna have a real knock-on effect so you're gonna need a cohesive really well organized team and guild that really are chill and learn to work with each other that there's just so much and i know it's like oh that's a free old how would it affect the politics and all this other stuff it's gonna have such a massive impact on the game it's insane and this is fucking pre-alpha too imagine the shit they're gonna have post launch post DLC three four year down the line I mean it, it's absolutely amazing and I, I already said this from the start we'd structured our guild with three olds in mind and our you know alpha 2 and in game post launch plans already in place and it's nice to see that the stuff we'd planned is still viable and that it's actually got even more viable so Intrepid have done a fucking amazing job here um, and I'm really happy with the progression we've seen so fucking good effort to them they, they really are pushing the boundaries and with some of the shit games and the, the companies I'm dealing with late, it really is refreshing to see. So I won't go on too much because the video is already long enough because of the mass amount of information we had, but for me personally, for the guild I'm building and growing and the community I have and the people I'm surrounded by and potential alliances, I'm getting a lot of positive feedback on the direction they're going in and kind of the things that we've seen. I do think it's really awesome that we've got this amount of information and that people know where we stand. Now personally, I knew a 
lot of this information anyway so we have had some new stuff but it was kind of all there if you really nitpick through and you looked at what Steven said previously and you go back a few years or even more than that and see the plans for free ults. They've stuck to it and during Alpha 2 many things will change and we'll test this out and we'll see how it works but all in all this is perfect for what I want. Could they change much? I'm sure if I go deeper into it I'll find some but I, I really think this is a nice base for Alpha 2 and hopefully you guys do as well. Now I know there's a bit of heat and debate about this and some people want the free olds and they're like we should be entitled to a free old. No you shouldn't. This is a extremely competitive PvP game and it's risk versus reward and only the hardest should be allowed to get these and some of the achievements. I am personally sick of games telling me that everything I do is amazing and that I'm amazing and everyone's amazing because that's just not how it is. Some players inevitably will be much better than me and will be able to put much more time in and guilds will be zerging their balls off but that doesn't matter. As long as I do the best I can do and I enjoy what I'm doing and my guild enjoys the direction we're going in that's fair enough every single part of this game shouldn't be accessible to everyone and if you really want to access that then you need to know you're going to have to put in the hours and time and work and that's how it should be and this will be a more niche game and it won't be for everyone and I think certain people are starting to see that no matter how much they cry and twine pvp will stay in this game certain things will stay in this game and this game isn't for everyone now hopefully that doesn't sound harsh but it's just the way it is I do want to say I appreciate the support i know the video is up and down at the minute because i don't want to make meaningless content but if you could drop a comment down below let me know what you think any opinions fine i don't care if it's against what i'm saying or negative drop a like on the video share the video in your communities and get that out there so the more feedback and trap you get the better and i really do appreciate you watching the video and i'll catch you in the next one cheers